All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us for Testimonial Tuesday here with my friend Maura Young from Rhode Island. And we're so glad that you're joining us. She has an amazing story of activation. And I just wanted to share with you a little bit of background. Uh, Maura and I know each other through a former direct sales company. We've kind of, you know, that's, that's where we made the connection. And back in the fall, um, back in the fall, can you not hear me? Now I can. Now I can. Okay. All right. So back in the fall, um, Maura saw a post that I put up on Facebook, and I'm going to let her share a little bit more of that with you. And it directed her to just kind of watch me a little bit and then reach out um, to ask some questions. Now, what you're going to hear tonight is, is pretty compelling. Um, Maura is a very private individual. She's not one to kind of put it out there, but she feels like she owes it to other people to have that same opportunity to hear what she heard and to take the chance that she took. We don't claim to cure, mitigate, treat anything, but what we do is we um, help the body find balance and, and activate ourselves at a cell or activate our, our body at a cellular level. And so that's what Maura has, has come to find out is, um, you know, this has been her journey. And so um, she is actually a school teacher. She's been a school teacher for 26 years. And ironically, that's how long I was a school teacher. She teaches high school health. I taught high school health. And she's also a physical education teacher. And I'll tell you what, she's rocking this um, way of this new way of teaching. Um, one of those kind of teachers that you want in your corner, somebody who can figure things out. She is, um, or her husband actually works in the school system as well as a principal type a person <laughs> and she has three kids Trey who is 16 years old and Malia who is um, she's actually 15 and then she has a son Kai who is 11 and so she has a busy busy life and I'll tell you what when things hit you and something hit her like it hit me you're not ready for that you don't have time for that and all you want to do is find the fix and so Maura took a, a chance and messaged me and reached out to me and um, you know I think that she's She's happy she did that, and I'm just going to let her share kind of what happened when she did that. Maura? Uh, thanks, Sandy. Um, so uh, I'll take you back like four years ago. Um, I had gone to the doctors because I just had a little bit of um, pain, and the doctor just um, sent me for an x-ray just to investigate and then called me that night and wanted to talk to me. Um, and then I, that led to several other doctor's appointments. And, um, sorry, this is hard. Um, um, and a number of biopsies. Um, and I was, I was scared. Um, and then I, you know, I was diagnosed with um, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And at the time my kids were 12, 11 and seven. And so when you're diagnosed with something like that, you can't, you can't help but think the worst. You know, my kids were young, I have to tell my kids and, um, you know, what do, what do I do now? Because uh, it wasn't something that I, who expects it, no one's expecting it. But, um, and then it was now what, what do I do? And no one was really sure. And um, so after, I think it was, you know, fourth or fourth or fifth biopsy, and I was diagnosed. <clears throat> um, and then they had to come up with a kind of a treatment plan, and I had gotten three opinions, um, and uh, two were the same. One was different, but what I what I didn't want to happen, and we all kind of agreed, was to remove one of my lungs, which, you know, it, that just was not an option for, for me because, and then the doctors explained that wouldn't be a good option, but then do you do chemo, do you do radiation? And then what we decided was that, um, Hold up just a second, Maura. We lost we lost the audio there. Can can 
Can you say something? Uh, okay, okay, I can hear you now. Yep. Okay. And you're saying what you didn't want was, was, you know, that was not an option for the removal of the lung. Right, right. Um, <clears throat> and so um, after several doctor's appointments and, and talking with the doctors and what, what would be the next steps, it was to um, keep an eye on it and keep monitoring it through a series of tests. And, you know, I, I was kind of blown away with that because I, maybe I was ignorant or naive to the fact that I thought, like, if, you, if a person was ever given a diagnosis of cancer, you treat it. You don't let it sit and grow. And I just thought of it was like a, a bomb waiting to, um, to explode. And I, I wanted it gone, and I didn't know what to do. But then I had to learn to, to live with it. And so go back to normal day of life, working, taking care of my kids, um, and trying to figure out just how to keep moving and not to always be on the, um, at the front of my mind. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I did. I, I, I tried to hide it well. I didn't talk about it because I prefer not to because if I talked about it, then I would think about it. And I also didn't want people to look at me and say, oh, she has, you know, she, she's cancer. But it was hard. Um, and so I thought, you know, I, you see people who go through cancer or who battle cancer. And the one thing that struck me was that I thought of myself like, you have survivors and you have fighters. And I, I wasn't a survivor because I still had it. I still have it. Um, and I was um, not a fighter because I wasn't fighting it. Like, what was I doing to fight it? So uh, believe me, I looked and I researched. I was doing um, like uh, all raw foods and then a certain food combination. I met with some people like how to treat this. And, um, and I would go back for my exams and tests and scans. And, and they were, you know, they would still see the masses. Um, and they would say, you know what? You know, it's still stable. Maybe it would grow, it was growing a little bit, but not a lot. Um, but I was tired of it. I just wanted it gone. I just wanted to be able to hear the words, the cancer is gone. You're cancer free. And, um, you know, I, I know when that would happen. And so I, um, you know, year after year after year, um, you know, and then I, I saw your, a few of your posts and I kind of quietly investigated and researched what you were doing, read some of the articles, um, dug a little bit deeper in the um, PubMed and the medical um, um, journals. And I, I knew I had an appointment. This is in November. I knew I had an appointment in December and I was going to have some scans done. And I said, you know, I want to, I want to try this. Um, so I had talked to you had offered to send samples, three days of samples. And I thought to myself, what's three days going to do? <laughs> if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this three months. Um, and so you had, you were very kind and said you would do it, but I declined. And I said, no, I'm just going to, to get it myself. And so I did. And I, when it came in or before it came in, I went to get blood work and I got my blood work. And then uh, I started, <clears throat> Um, taking it. And then in December, I was supposed to have my appointment because of insurance red tape. Um, my appointment got pushed back um, because I needed my scans. <clears throat> and then I, I got my um, scans and then I went in for my doctor's appointment and this ended up being in um, January. I had my scan in December, scans in December. And then in January, I went to my doctor's and um, here, I was waiting in the, I had more blood work done and then I was waiting in the waiting room. I mean, in the um, room and the doctor came in and I know, <clears throat> Sandy, I talked to you about this before. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, so when I was um, in the doctor's office, I, I truly felt like, you know, you want to feel like you're number one, you're the most important person that the, that the doctor is seeing. And so the doctor came in, hi, how you doing? And then he took out my chart and he was asking questions. Very nice guy, very friendly. <clears throat> but he opened the chart and he looked at me and, and he was looking and he kind of put his hand on his hip and kind of shook his head and looked at me and he said, what have you been doing? I got scared. <clears throat> and um, he, I said, why? And he said, well, what have you been doing? And I said, well, tell me why. What do you see? Because I was nervous, like, oh, my goodness. And he said, your, your masses are getting smaller. And I, um, I was like, what? And he said, they're smaller. And he, he made it, he said, are you praying a lot? And I said, well, you know, yes. And he said, did you ask Santa? <laughs> you know, he's trying to make a joke. And um, he said, you must have been really good. And, um, and I, I was in disbelief. And I said, can you look at it again? And he did. And he said, yes. He said, they're measuring smaller. He said, what are you doing? So I told him and he kind of looked at me and he said, well, keep doing what you're doing. And then I got nervous though. I said, what if, what if there's a mistake? I need to know that this is, this is real. And of course I, you know, I, I cried a bit and he hugged me. He said, why are you crying? He said, are those happy tears and i said yes they're happy tears but i i'm nervous i need to know that this is real you're not making a mistake and he said well i'll bring it back to the hospital tomorrow and talk to the board and we'll go over it No? Yeah, now I can. Okay, okay. It's okay. You know what? Technology is great. We meant to go this live and it didn't. And, and so we'll just, we'll just go with it is. So, okay. so take it. keep going. <laughs> We're interested. And now I can't hear you again. I might have the hospital. A, okay. Okay. Um, he said he would take <clears throat> my chart to the hospital and, and meet with his board, his doctors, and review my chart with him. And he would call me in the morning and the next day. So he called me and he said, we reviewed it <clears throat> and they are getting smaller. He said the scans were accurate. And I took a big sigh of relief. I was very relieved. Honestly, but I also knew I and I told you this just yesterday. <laughs> I know you're getting frustrated, but it's okay. I'm just going to tell you I can't hear you when I can't because I'm <laughs> it's actually working very well because you're leading up to the, the story we all want to hear. And we're on pins. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. 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 So um, I had one more. Um, biopsy and then I was going the following week and when I tell you that like I'm a very private person I'm a very private person I don't tell anybody you know I had to leave work I was fortunate that my son was getting his license so I could use that as an excuse instead of saying I'm going to the hospital you know to get a test so anyway <clears throat> I go I went to the hospital and I remember it, I was getting the biopsy and the doctors were like this is going to be hard for us he said usually when we when we see cancer in cells it's it's black and there's hardly anything there and you know again that's all the stuff you want to hear and I kept thinking is what I just did is this what's doing is this what's making the positive changes in my body mm -hmm. it's the only thing that I changed. I tried, like I said, <clears throat> raw food, natural foods. I tried um, many natural things and, and <clears throat> nothing changed. This is the only thing 
that I did and then there was something that changed and what it did is it ha it's given me hope and I feel like I'm a fighter now I can do this and I'm fighting and I feel like I'm winning you know and um, to know that you can take control and and finally because i haven't been able to take control because i was waiting for someone to say okay we'll we'll treat you well i didn't have to wait anymore um and i don't and so i have another doctor's appointment coming up next month i am looking forward to see seeing what he has to say one more thing i forgot to mention is that one after our appointments we go into his office and he goes over blood work and and things like that and i was looking at my chart and he said your your lymph your lymphocyte cells are really low he's never said that to me he's like your blood work blood work looks okay you know it's okay and i said it's really low so i said can you please explain to me what that means you know cause sometimes they talk in their language and i should know what it means and he just said <clears throat> your lymphocyte cells they're high when your body is fighting something and your body isn't fighting it doesn't need to fight as much and I that was compelling to me to hear that and so you know yeah I'm scared I don't want to talk about this but I I feel like and I, I'm torn because if I if you hadn't shared with me <laughs> not that it was with me personally, if you hadn't shared and, and um, some of the things that you have, you were experiencing and what people you know were experiencing, I would not have known about this. And I would not have known that this was out there and could help people live longer, feel better, be more hopeful. I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, and I am just so grateful because I don't, I don't always have to think about it. Mm -hmm. um, and because uh, it can consume you mentally, it can consume you knowing that you have this. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's almost like you're breaking free, like there's freedom again. Mm -hmm. So thank you. I'm extremely grateful for you. Well, Maura, I'm extremely grateful for you. And, and as you're telling this story, and as hard as it is for you to tell it, it took me back to where I was too when I, when I was diagnosed and, and the unknowns and the, you know, you try to be, like you said, you're trying to fight. And I think when, when I was done with chemo, that's when I was the most scared because I was just like you said, I didn't know if I was a survivor and I didn't know if I, I wasn't fighting anymore and it was scary. And so to be able to take control and, and allow your body to heal itself, to know that, that something as simple as, as, as becoming activated could do that. Now, again, we don't know, we don't claim to cure, trait, mitigate. We aren't saying that that's what happened to you. It's the only thing you changed and maybe it was just your time. Maybe it was just overall that everything you tried, maybe it was just a miracle that all of a sudden it was your time and it was just coincidence that this happened. But but I have to give you credit because I know how private you are and I know how hard it was for you to share this. And I didn't ask you to do that for me. I felt like it would be something that would also help you. Um, maybe to, to I, I know the, the one thing for you to say, thank you for doing that because it gave me hope. There's nothing in this world that could make me feel better than somebody just saying I was part of something that was so uh, compelling and, and so uplifting to them. And so, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm so interested to, I guess, um, I wouldn't say excited is the word, but kind of an anticipation of what your next appointment is going to be and, hmm. and, and what your doctor says, because I had some of the same kind of, this, of, of, um, talk with my, um, with my doctor when I went through my colonoscopy and he's like what are you doing and I really didn't even know how to describe it because that was early on in my activation and he said the same thing whatever you're doing do not stop mm. and he was he was equally looking at my chart going wow 
yeah. at this point. So I, I think, you know, if you had one message to, to give to somebody about, you know, what was it that made you finally after, because I know you're a researcher, I know you're a digger, what was it that finally you just said, why weren't you afraid to try something? What was it that made you just pull the trigger? When I had seen some of the, or read some of the stories um, uh, of some of the people that you had posted and some of, um, and there were some doctors that I had watched their videos that they were sharing. Um, <clears throat> I knew I had nothing to lose. I had three weeks before my appointment. It ended up being a little bit longer, but at the time I didn't know. And I said, what can happen really in three weeks? And it ended up five weeks before I had my um, scan. But I had a short window and that was, I said, I had nothing to lose. No, I wasn't doing anything anyway to fight it. And what if, all I kept thinking is, what if this changes something? What if? I did not expect it to change that quickly. Like I said, I, I committed to three months. Mm -hmm. It didn't, it took five weeks. Yeah. And I think that you say something so important right there because somebody, you know, you have a very um, realistic outlook. I'm going to give it three months. There are people who say, I'll give it three days. And if it doesn't do anything, I'm done. And so there's a lot of things happening in our body at the cellular level that we don't know if we could unzip our forehead to our pelvis, open our bodies up and see actually all that goes on in there. I think we'd be blown away. So for you to give yourself a fighting chance and literally a fighting chance, I just, you know, I am so blessed that you, that you um, trusted me enough to, to look further into it, to even pay attention to anything that I post because there's so much stuff out there. And I think that, you know, there again, your voice is going to, if it can change one person, if it can help one person, then you're be coming out and having the courage to tell your story is going to be worth it more. So, so I appreciate you. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. I know how hard it was and um, very difficult. <laughs> yeah. Well, you did great. And, and I, I thank you so much. And if you're watching this and you're watching in our group, someone brought you to this group, someone shared this with you, you need to get back with them and find out how you can become activated and get started just to find balance. Even if you, even if there's nothing wrong, it's always nice to dig the well before you're thirsty, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, yes. thank you so much, Maura. We'll be talking to you soon. Great. Thank you so much. So grateful for you. Thank you. Thank you.